I would hear things like, you should kill yourself. And I would hear a lot of whispers like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do that. For years, Alexis Hoffman says she was tormented by voices. It had started in 2009. She was a freshman in high school and had just come out of a physically, sexually, and mentally abusive relationship. She became angry and was filled with guilt and shame. My heart became callous after the abusive relationship because I felt like I could just never get right with God. Like I felt like I was too far gone. Like I had messed up too much. Having pushed her Christian upbringing aside, Alexis would spend the rest of her high school years filled with drinking, drugs, sex, and cutting. By now, her parents, Ted and Robin, had realized the life their daughter was living. When the only thing that your daughter ever gave you was joy, and then you find out that she's doing drugs, sex, you know, alcohol, it breaks your heart. By her senior year, she was being tormented by nightmares. Then came the voices. They tell me I'm useless and ugly, that I'm worthless and dirty. They tell me to just die, and I believe them. I remember having this obsession with like stabbing. I would sneak out into the kitchen, and I would start taking one knife at a time and bringing it into my room. One day, her mom found the stash of knives and suicide notes. Immediately, she took her daughter to the ER and Alexis was admitted to a psychiatric hospital. I am just talking to God and saying, Lord, you said, and your word says that she is yours and you will not let her anything happen to her. And I know that your word is true and I believe you. Over the next four years, Alexis would be in and out of 20 different psych wards, diagnosed with bipolar and schizophrenia, among others. Even being heavily medicated, didn't quiet the voices or ease her torment. My life was a living hell, and not only my life, but my family's. There's no joy, just empty, just not knowing what was gonna happen, and, and me not knowing either how to help her. When you looked into her eyes, there was an absolute dead stare, always. And she never, ever had that. She always had the most beautiful smile, and her eyes were always sparkling, and it wasn't my little girl. Now, unable to hold down a job and on disability, Alexis was prone to violent fits of rage. She had no control over her actions, often blacking out. When Alexis got mad, whew, it was not pretty. It was, it was scary. I had even said to my husband, we should get locks on the bedroom door. One time, she woke up in a pool of blood after cutting herself 40 times. And I would be so ashamed, like, what did I just do? Like, that's not me. Why did I do that? That is not how I act. Like, I don't know. I don't know why I keep doing this. Who is that? Exhausted, Alexis told her family she was going to kill herself. I've got these voices telling me what to do. I'm seeing things and I said, I'm just tired. I'm so tired. I'm at war with myself and I can't do it anymore. Robin and I were preparing ourselves for her to kill herself. And you talk about that's, that's tough when you have to prepare yourself. The next day, Robin took Alexis to a healing conference where Pastor Todd White was ministering. Alexis went to the altar. I thought to myself, these meds aren't working. These doctors can't help me. And I said a prayer to God. I said, God, if you're real, then I need you to show up. And I need you to show up in a big way. And if you don't, I'm killing myself tonight. Then, no one Pastor White her. prayed for her. I could see her eyes going crazy. I knew that she had devils. I just looked at her and said, come out. And she fell to the floor, screaming. I remember my mouth just opening so wide, and these screams of horror were coming out. Screams, hissing, growling. I just felt stuff come out of my body, like I could physically feel things leave. She got free and got delivered, not because of anything except the authority of the name of Jesus. I felt a peace that I had never felt before. Like, I could hear myself think. I felt restored and I felt new. And the love of God that I felt in that moment was like nothing I've ever felt before. 
Alexis rededicated her life to God and asked for forgiveness of her sins. I was repenting like for past things and everything, but I knew in my heart of hearts too that that those were cast into the sea of forgetfulness and I was on this new this new path with him. We were up all night just praising God and just the miracle that happened. If you're wondering if God can heal people with a mental condition, the answer is yes, because he healed my daughter. Alexis stopped all her psych meds and has been free from mental illness ever since. Today, Alexis is married to Jonah. She's a substitute teacher and loves her new purpose in life, helping others find freedom from mental illness through Jesus Christ. If there's one thing I can tell you, it would be to cling to hope, and that is Jesus. Keep going to Him. Don't get tired or weary of going to Him. He's the only solution to your problems. You know, so many times in life, especially when we're young, you know, we decide we're just going to dabble in the things of the world, and we'll put Jesus over here, and we'll, we'll deal with Him a little bit later. Well, we don't know sometimes the doors that we're opening. We don't know the, the doors to our souls, to our hearts, to our behavior, to our minds that we're opening until sometimes, as in Alexis's case, it's too late. You know, God has a plan and a purpose for every life. He has a, an outline for how we're to live. And so often we see it uh, as restrictive, you know, as I, I don't, I don't want to come to Jesus because there are rules and regulations. They're not rules and regulations, friends. It's love's safe harbor. It's the place for you to be where you're protected by the presence of God, where you're not open to diabolical things coming in spiritually and ruining your life. Jesus is saying to every single one of us, let me love you. Let me love you. You know, he's already chosen us, but in the end, we have to choose him. I mean, that's the bottom line of the deal, really. He's there, his arms are outstretched. The sacrifice for you has been paid, and it doesn't matter where you've been, what you've done, or how long you've stayed there. But what does matter is, today, will you choose him? To just say, Jesus, I acknowledge you're it. You're what I've been looking for. You're the, you're the core of everything. And so I'm coming to you broken. I'm a mess. My life has fallen apart. And I'm saying, I need you. I want you. I'm asking you to be the savior of my life, my soul, my very being. Will you forgive my sins? I know they're great, God. Will you forgive them as your word says, as far as the east is from the west? Your word tells me you'll remember them no more. Help me forgive myself for the things that I've done. I want to receive you, Jesus, and I want you to change me. I want you to change the way that I think. I want you to change the way that I act. I want you to change the things that I'm, that I'm attracted to. I want to be attracted to you and to the things that are a part of your world. I want to live a life that matters. I want to start over. I'm asking you for that today, Jesus, to be my Savior and the Lord of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Teach me your ways. Give me an obedient heart one that embraces your purpose and your plans for me. I give it all to you. I'm setting myself up on the altar before you, and I'm saying, Jesus, take my life. Make it matter for you. And I'm asking this in your name. You know, God will set you free. He will set you free of everything that has robbed you of the life you were intended to have. Don't wait. Do it right now, today. Call our toll-free number if you need someone to pray with you. Always a friend there. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. 
Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.